Have you ever battled with not being able to do something that you've always done and really you want to do, but for some reason or other, you just can't do it? Let me know in the comments if, if you can relate. You know, for me, last week was one of those times. I had a nasty head cold, but I really didn't want to miss doing PB's Jam. You see, to me, being consistent is more than trying to work the YouTube algorithm. It's a matter of integrity. PB's Jam is a commitment I've made, and I've worked hard all my life at being a man of my word. So to miss was a difficult, but I think necessary decision. But it got me thinking about consistency, which made it an appropriate topic for today. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm Pastor Bert and this is my jam. Please feel free to click those like, bell, and subscribe buttons if you want to keep getting my videos in your feed. Otherwise, YouTube will fill it up with carpool karaoke reruns. <laughs> I just learned actually that James Corden started doing them eight years ago. Talk about consistency. And that's what we're going to do today. I have to confess that the first thing that came to my mind when it comes to consistency is drywalling. <laughs> you see, I've done a lot of drywalling over the years. And I've learned that consistency is important in drywalling in two ways. One is if you're not consistent in keeping your skills up, it's a lot harder to do a good job. The other is, if your mud isn't the right consistency, it's equally as difficult to do a good job. Now, as weird as it may seem, I think this is a good analogy when it comes to living a good and godly life as well. Because to me, being consistent in using your skills speaks of faithfulness. If you're a musician, you know what I mean. You're consistent in practice, practicing and in attending rehearsals, then you are being faithful to that commitment and calling, right? And in his parable of the talents, Jesus shows the importance of this kind of consistency in our lives. While a talent in those days was a kind of currency, the parallel to faithfully using the skills and talents God has given us, I think, is obvious. When the two good servants in Jesus' story were faithful in using what they'd been given by their master, Jesus highlights his response. He says, The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now, I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. In this parable, Jesus shows that faithfulness and consistency is valued and rewarded by God. But what about the other kind of consistency? How should our lives be like the proper consistency of like my drywall mud? Well, to me, this speaks to the integrity of a person's character. If the consistency of the mud is too soft, it'll run and make a mess. If it's too hard, then it doesn't bond and things come apart at the seams quite literally. So how does this relate to our character? Well, the Bible shows us that the ultimate goal for humanity is for us to follow and become like Jesus. So it's a good idea to identify how Jesus lived while he walked among people. Now his closest friend and follower, John, said it like this. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. You get that? Full of grace and truth. Jesus was full of grace and truth truth. There's a balance, right? Not too runny, not too hard. Runny grace ignores God's justice, but hard truth ignores God's mercy. That's why it needs to be 
both in balance. Only then will we have the right consistency in our lives and character, faithfulness, and integrity. I believe that when we are consistent in both areas, we accurately reflect God's heart to people and will hear his, well done. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus into this world to reveal your heart to us. God, and Lord Jesus, I thank you for willingly coming and laying your life down to ultimately show the fullness, the, the extent of your love towards us. Yes, your justice had to deal with sin, but your mercy did it in a way, God, that, that you took it upon yourself so that we would be free from its consequences. And I thank you for that. And I pray for my friends today watching, Lord, that they would receive you into their lives so that they too could find that the that, that balance of, of living lives that are consistent with your word, that which pleases you, so that they too can hear that well done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are full of grace and truth. Help us to live our lives in such a way to honor you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining me, folks. I hope you have a wonderful week, and see you again next time. Bye for now.